Hello everyone. Today I will be sharing a new project of mine with you for free. With this project, you will save costs when mass producing sine wave inverters. It will also increase the stability and durability of the product. You can download the project file in the comments section below this video. This is the soldering path of the chip. How would you route it? If the number of pins is low, you can route traces directly outwards. However, when there are many solder pads on the chip, it becomes difficult to do the fan out. So we drill vias to transfer the traces to other layers. Note that we first extend a trace from the pad before drilling the via. While routing becomes much simpler, you still need to route at least one trace from pad to via, so there can still be issues with pads being too dense or too numerous to route effectively. If we directly place the via directly on the pad, there's no need for additional trace before via but this can lead to solder wicking away through the hole during soldering, causing defects or cold solder joints. Via in-pad technology addresses these issues. We still place the via on the pad, but then fill it with resin and plate it with copper. The surface shows almost no trace of this, and soldering is as reliable as with a regular pad, saving on routing, optimizing board size, and also enhancing thermal conduction. If you're looking to optimize your routing and save time, you can take advantage of free via in-pad service. Try it now and save time. You can see in many of my projects that I use a 12 volt power module to supply power to the EGS002 control circuit. This module is quite expensive and can only provide a limited current of about 0.3 amps at 12 volts. It is not sufficient to power high capacity inverters. To overcome this limitation, I have designed a new SPWM module that integrates a 15 volt 1.5 amps power supply. With this new SPWM module, you can easily design inverters with a capacity of up to 10 kilowatts. Thank you JLC PCB for sponsoring the PCB for this project. You can use my Gerber file to place an order on the JLC PCB website. Only $2 for 5 PCBs with excellent quality. For small quantities, you can solder by hand, however, if you're producing in large quantities, I recommend using JLC PCB's PCBA service. They have a large stock of genuine components to meet all your needs, and their prices are very affordable. This is the product after most of the components have been soldered. To control the MOSFET, I use the TLP250 optocoupler. You can also use the TLP350 or its equivalent. They all work well. The heart of this circuit is the EG810IC, which is inexpensive and works very reliably. The 12 volt power block here uses a flyback structure. It can operate over a very wide range from 25 volts to 450 volts. Therefore, this module can be used for both iron core and switching transformer inverters. As you can see here, with an input voltage of just 35 volts, the circuit is operational. We will get 13 volts for the TLP250 optocoupler and five volts for the EG8010 microcontroller.
This SPWM module controls an H bridge, providing two square wave signals at 50, 60 Hertz and two SPWM signals. The waveforms are very clean and undistorted. I am confident it will perform well. Uh, this is the power board. It has a continuous power rating of 1500 watts with a maximum efficiency of 95% and can be designed to work with 12 volts, 24 volts, or 48 volt systems.